Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 129, and uh, I'm excited because we're going to be coming up on our like six months anniversary, right? Like November 5th and then May 5th. Uh, and so around that time, I'm trying to plan our 150th episode. And basically, I've been buying a bunch of Venom comics lately, some extra copies of Venomized with the different covers. I've been writing down the digital codes for those. I've also been picking up the Venom variant covers for his 30th anniversary, which were like we're in New Mutants and uh, X-Men Blue and you know different comics like that and I've been writing down those digital codes and what I'm planning on my 150th episode is that we're going to give out all those codes in one episode so I encourage and hope that you guys just take one or two codes and then save the rest for other people and then in that video comment which code you took uh, so that way we know and we can keep track of all of them for other people who come across the video so I'm hoping that's what happens uh, you know but obviously I can't control that stuff but I hope you guys do that and do share and spread the wealth there will probably be around 30 codes uh, total if if not more uh, in that episode so we'll do that giveaway uh, for digital comics in episode 150 uh, but today we're on web episode 129 and we're gonna be talking about something very interesting I'm wearing my Green Lantern shirt because we're gonna be dipping into the DC universe actually in this episode of Venom and I know a lot of you guys are like what what's going on well actually there was this little tiny pocket of the 90s right around when the clone saga was going on in spider-man um, and a lot of the Venom miniseries were coming out every month they had a crossover. Marvel was hurting, I think, financially, and they were looking for you know a way to, to make money, and they were looking for a way to come up with a cool event. DC was like, hey, we'll make an event with you guys. Fans have been talking about it for years. We would love to cross over and have Marvel versus DC actually do a miniseries where our characters fight each other, and we have people vote on who should win, and we'll come up with like a dozen fights or so, and those will be the main fights that people can vote on, and then we'll just throw some other battles in there just to have some fun. And it was a four-issue miniseries. They did two issues, and two of them were published by Marvel, and then the other two were published by DC. And then in the middle, there was this thing called Amalgam, where in the middle of the story, like the Celestials and these other godlike beings like from both worlds decided to join and merge the worlds together. So characters like Superman and Captain America merged into one character, and their backgrounds merged into one background, one origin story. And so Captain America and Superman became Super Soldier, and Wolverine and Batman became became Dark Claw, and uh, Superboy and Spider-Man became Spider-Boy, and then it went on and on and on. Uh, uh, Wonder Woman and Storm from the X-Men became Amazon, and it was a really weird and goofy time, but I actually have fond memories of this stuff, because I voted for every battle that was in that. Uh, I picked up every week at the comic store any kind of like flyer they're handing out where you could vote and stuff like that like I would do anything, bought the cards. Uh, I got really invested in this universe, and I really liked it, because even then I knew this wasn't going to last. And it's it's really funny because now we're like 20 years later and in in that time we've only gotten like one comic, Justice League versus Avengers uh, by Kurt Busiek and, uh, and George Perez, I think. And that's pretty much all we've gotten for Marvel and DC crossing over. And it, with the companies being the way they are, I doubt they'll ever cross over again. I really hope I'm wrong. I, I saw some Twitter stuff recently about the companies talking about, hey, if you do this, I'll edit it. And if you write it, I'll draw it, you know. And it would be great if the companies could put their B aside and come together for like one summer event that would be awesome I don't know if it's gonna happen so let's reminisce with some things here we have some battles of the symbiotes in this Marvel event for, and DC event from the 90s. The first one was, so the event happens and they start releasing these one-shot crossovers where uh, different characters of Marvel and DC Universe are, are teaming up. Uh, Batman and Punisher teamed up. Uh, there was a couple other team-ups. I can't remember all of them. Uh, but the biggest one for me was Spider-Man and Batman. And this one is written by J.M. DeMattis, who is a great writer uh, in both Marvel and DC stuff. He's written some of the DC animated movies in the past couple years and then wrote Spider-Man, I believe, Craven's Last Hunt and a lot of other great stories. Uh, he's come back and written some current Craven stuff not too long ago. So I really like his writing. And he came on board and wrote this with Mark Bagley drawing it. And of course, Mark Bagley had to draw it because it had Carnage in it. And it's Batman and Spider Man versus Carnage and Joker. And I'll try to put some artwork up here. And we'll talk about the story real quickly uh, because basically the story is really simple. Uh, they don't explain the universes merging or nothing like that. As far as they're concerned, Spider-Man's in New York and Batman's in Gotham and they just kind of heard of each other and they never ran into each other. And that's kind of how they decide to tell this story during this big crossover event as the worlds are getting pushed closer and closer. So they don't really reference that they've never known each other before. They kind of just jump right in and get into it. Um, 
And so, you know, it starts off with some flashbacks. Spider-Man is remembering the night Uncle Ben died. And in his memory, he just remembers the, the burglar laughing about Uncle Ben dying. And it, and it gives him like this weird vision of what turns out to be the Joker later on. Uh, obviously, that doesn't mean Joker is the one who killed Uncle Ben. But it's just the blurring of the worlds and the nightmares that these characters are having that just kind of it's playing on their mind a little bit. Same with Batman. Batman's remembering the night his mom died. And he remembers the guy with, a, with an evil uh, toothy smile that reminds him of Carnage later on in the story so it, it seems at first that it's like oh carnage you know is old enough to have killed bruce wayne's parents and that's not the case that's not what they're saying in the storyline they're just saying these are the kind of evil that these men represent and so when batman meets carnage he's like that's the kind of evil that killed my parents and when spider-man meets joker he says that's the kind of evil that killed my uncle ben and so they're not really saying that uncle ben was killed by joker and that uh, Carnage or Cletus Cassidy killed the, the Wayne. So they're not saying that at all. Uh, but in the story, they kind of play up that. And it's like the two guys dealing with their villains separately at first. Spider-Man fights Carnage in New York as he tries to bust out of Ravencroft uh, Institute. He beats him down with his fists, like just full on beats him down. Carnage gets subdued. They tie him up and this new doctor named Dr. Breyer, she's coming into Ravencroft and says, I found a cure for insanity, but it's a forced cure. We're gonna put a chip in their head and we control the chip. And so uh, so we're gonna do this to Cletus Cassidy. If it works, I wanna use it on one of the biggest criminals ever in the world. And so they try it on Cletus, they force the chip into him, and he becomes docile, and he becomes like willing to listen to whatever they gotta say. And then she's like, all right, it worked, so let's go to Gotham and try it on the, the criminal I wanna try it on. So, you know, Batman over in uh, Gotham City, he takes down uh, Joker, brings him to Arkham Asylum, and Briar's there, and she does it on Joker as well, and turns him docile. So the next day they have this big press conference, Peter Parker is there to kind of, you know, photograph it, or Bruce Wayne is there because he doesn't trust that Joker's actually cured. And up there on stage is Briar with uh, Carnage and uh, Joker right next to him, or next to her. And she's saying, like, look, they're cured. We did it. Uh, and, you know, we're going to take this treatment around the country and we're going to cure more insane people like this. We can, if we can uh, cure these two, then we can help anybody out there who needs help. And she gets in the car and they start to drive and she's like, hey, that went really well. I can't wait. But then what happens is Carnage's symbiote leaves uh, Cletus Cassidy temporarily and kills everyone in the front seat of the car and then frees himself and then also frees the Joker. And it turns out uh, the, the symbiote uh, destroyed the chip right after they stitched Cletus Cassidy back up. So he was never under any control. He was just playing the whole time so he could get out. And of course, when he meets Joker, he likes Joker. He's like, oh, you're crazy like me. Kind of like when Maximal Carnage, when he gathered all those psychopaths together. So he's like, I like you. So he gives him a lobotomy, destroys the chip inside him, and then now Joker is free. And so now it's Carnage and Joker teaming up uh, to fight Batman and, uh, and Spider-Man. And of course, Batman doesn't want Spider-Man's help at first, and he's trying to go it alone, but he, he realizes he can't you know, figure out out Cletus Cassidy that well and he doesn't know his patterns so he decides to team up with Spider-Man and uh, after the two of them fail at stopping the villains on their own they team up and they go at it together to uh, you know to take down their two biggest two of their biggest villains uh, definitely Batman's biggest villain uh, but Carnage definitely Spider-Man's one of his most lethal villains for sure and so uh, they do they take they team up and Batman trusts Spider-Man enough to go after Joker and jo uh, and Spider-Man trusts Batman enough to go after Cletus Cassidy and so they split up they go after the other enemies and they're having those flashbacks of the nightmares at the beginning of the story. And they're like, look, here I am face to face with the evil that killed my uncle. Or Bruce is like, here I am face to face with the evil that killed my parents. So what am I going to do? Are, am I going to kill this man? Or am I going to, you know, just stop him? And Spider-Man goes through the same thing with Joker. He's like, this guy's going to release a virus. Should I kill him or should I just let him go? And of course, they choose the heroic route. They take down both their villains, uh, punch them really hard in the faces. Batman uses all kind of tech, but also just goes right at Cletus Cassidy. He's like, you know what? I bet you this guy is not used to just fighting someone who is hardcore hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter. So he distracts Carnage the best he can with sounds and things, but he just goes right in. Bam, 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 bam. Knocks him down, takes him out with his fists like Batman would, right? Batman's like, hey, I'm a trained fighter for a reason. And then Spider-Man, he uses a little bit of his wit to outthink the Joker, but then he also knocks the Joker out. Uh, so he wins the day there. And then at the end, the criminals get taken back to their respective places, and Batman, just with a simple gesture, shakes Spider-Man's hand and is like, all right, look, I trust you, kid. Thank you for your help. And you know, without saying it, he's just like, you know, this is what the handshake means. And Spider-Man kind of gets it. And he's like, all right, you're the, the tough brooding type. I get it. I know guys like you, like Wolverine and stuff. So that's fine. So they shake hands and they swing off, you know, go back to their respective uh, parts of their towns and stuff. And that's, it's a really simple story. Uh, it's, it's, you know, not 
a lot of people might say it's not well written or anything like that. I I have a soft spot for this story. I kind of like it. It's it's fun to me, and the artwork is really great. Seeing Mark Bagley draw Batman and uh, Joker was really cool, and he's done that before and other times in his career too. But seeing it here with Spider-Man and Carnage, I thought was really good. And so after this, the the worlds really do kind of merge. They start to come together, and we get the Amalgam Universe. And in the Amalgam Universe, we get a bunch of number one issues featuring some of these heroes. And this is Spider Boy number one. And uh, on the cover, you can see there, he's fighting Bizarnage, which is a cross between Carnage and Bizarro. And Superboy here is a cross between Super or Spider-Boy is Superboy and Spider-Man. And the book is uh, drawn by um, uh, 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 Mike Rowingo, the late Mike Rowingo, amazing artist. I love this guy's stuff. One of my favorite artists from the late 90s, early 2000s. And Carl Kessel, who co-wrote it and did some of the inks on it. And you get to see, because I don't have any of the scans of these, I'll try to put up some of the images there of uh, Bizarnage uh, attacking. And this is just a really simple story. It's just, it's not in continuity, even though it acts like it's in the middle of a story. It's just a one-shot book you can find out there in like a dollar bin probably somewhere and it's under amalgam comics that's where dc and marvel mixed and it's just spider boy number one it's the only issue of it and it has him fighting bizarnage so you get a cool little like you know glimpse into a world that could have been if these heroes and villains were merged as one characters so uh yeah and then of course he has guns that shoot webbing uh but then he also has like some super strength and he kind of dresses like a spite uh, super boy from the 90s with the leather jacket and stuff so yeah i really like this and i think his secret identity was pete ross which is like a mixture of Peter Parker and Pete Ross from Superman comics, uh, Spider uh, Superman, Clark Kent's childhood best friend. So yeah, just kind of neat little storyline. Not much to say about it. He of course takes down Bizarnage using a machine with the challengers of the Fantastic, which are like the challengers of the unknown and the Fantastic Four kind of mixed together. And he uses one of their machines to capture uh, him and throw him back in the Phantom Negative Zone, as they call it. Uh, and then after the worlds get separated, uh, like a year passes, and DC and Marvel decide to do one more crossover called uh, DC Marvel All Access. And this was a four issue miniseries where basically after the world separated, a couple little things didn't fully go back to the worlds they were supposed to. And because of that, this character named Axis, who was supposed to be the guardian of keeping the worlds, these two worlds specifically separate, he has to jump back into action because he found out the Venom symbiote stuck around with Eddie Brock in the DC universe. And so he's like, oh crap, and he gets a vision of it and he's like, all right, the worlds are supposed to be apart. It's been a couple months now. Everything seems fine. Uh, but now I see Venom and he looks like he's in Metropolis somehow. So I got to go find him. And it's basically this miniseries is all uh, this character Axis dealing with these anomalies that are still left behind in other universes. So there was like a team up between Robin and Jubilee and uh, like Hulk and some other characters and Daredevil and Batman and stuff. Uh, but in this one, this is only the first issue, has a really cool encounter because like I said, Venom is in Metropolis. So of course he comes across Superman. And I'll have some of the artwork pop up. Uh, pop up here while I'm talking about it. It's uh, it just pretty much lasts, uh, maybe about 60% of this issue is, is Superman fighting Venom and being like, what is this thing? Uh, you know, it's an alien. I can x-ray it. I can tell it's, you know, not human. Uh, I can kind of see what its weaknesses are. Maybe he tries to he hurt it with, you know, his eye, his laser beams and things like that. But Venom is trying to stay ahead of him. Uh, again, Superman is out of his element. He, like Batman, when he fought Carnage, he doesn't know this creature's, you know, maneuvers or how he acts or how he, you know, does. So he tries to fight him. And then meanwhile, Venom is so freaked out by the strength of Superman, the power of Superman, that he keeps this woman that he found nearby as like a hostage. Even though Eddie Brock's not really that kind of bad guy at this point in the comics, this is past Lethal Protector, so he's more of a good guy, but he's just like freaked out. He doesn't know where he is. He's trying to get answers. He's grabbing the girl like, just tell me where I'm at so I can get out of here. And she's like, you're in Metropolis. He says, I don't know what that is. I don't know what Metropolis is. Because at this point, the worlds had separated and the, the each side has no memory that they've met the other side at this point. So when Spider-Man shows up, Axis is like trying to help uh, Superman fight Venom. He can't do it. So Axis goes into the Marvel Universe, grabs Spider-Man, brings him over and says, you help Superman fight Venom. And so the Spider-Man and Superman team up to fight Venom. And uh, they take him down because of the help of Axis, who goes and takes some uh, tech from Cadmus Labs, shows up with like a heat gun, heats up Venom, and he, he's able to save the day. And then Superman and, and Spider-Man are like, hey, thank you for the help. We appreciate it. And unlike, you know, the Spider-Man-Batman crossover where Batman kind of didn't want Spider-Man around, Superman likes Spider-Man almost instantly. He's like, hey, thanks very much. And then he's like, yeah, he's like, thanks for helping me catch this bad guy. And he's like, and he goes, what, what do you, can you tell me about him? And he's like, yeah, you know, he's a reporter. You know how those guys are. And Superman's like, what? And he goes, why are you looking at me like that? And Superman's like, 
no reason, <laughs> you know, because obviously he's a reporter too. So uh, it was pretty neat. There's little jabs like that, little jokes in there. When Spider Man shows up, he's like, "Hey, Eddie Brock's mom, can Eddie come out to play?" You know, like to mess with Eddie. And Eddie's like, "Oh, God, I'm on another world, and I still can't get away from Spider Man." So uh, they take each other, you know, down. They there are they team up, uh, Superman and Spider Man, and they take down Venom uh, with Axis' help. And then Spider Man brings Venom back to the Marvel Universe, and then Axis goes around in the rest of the miniseries to try to find the other anomalies. So that's kind of all that happens in these storylines. It's, you know, pretty quick things. These, unfortunately, are not in print. So I, you know me, I try not to cover too many things that aren't in print that you can't go out there and buy. But if you go to a comic show or if you go to your local comic shop or if you go online and look at milehighcomics.com, I'll try to put a link to them down below. You can typically order a bunch of these back issues on there. And, uh, and you know, you could probably find the DC Marvel All Access stuff. I really hope these companies come to an agreement of some kind to where they can at least reprint this stuff. Because I think there's some love for it now. Because we live in a world now where DC and Marvel fans just seem to get nasty with each other online over the movies. And I would like something like this to kind of, re, you know, to kind of unite them in some way. I think it would be a good peacekeeping, uh, you know, uh, thing to have out there. Uh, and I, it may not work in that regard. A lot of people may hit, still hate these stories, may not like them, but I would really like to see a reprinting, like a, a Marvel vs. DC uh, trade paperback, an Amalgam Volume 1 trade paperback, an Amalgam Volume 2, because they did a second series of Amalgams. I even had the other one. This is the other Spider-Boy issue they did during the All Access storyline. It's called Spider-Boy Team-Up, and it has him with the Legion of uh, Galactic Guardians from the year 2099. So, yeah, I mean, they had a lot of fun with this stuff in the 90s, and I really liked it. And then because we never got any more of it, to me, that's what makes it so special. And I think a lot of these stories, these writers and artists really put their heart into it, and they really had fun mixing these characters. My favorite by far was Speed Demon, who is the Flash and Ghost Rider mixed together. Uh, that was definitely by far my favorite. But I also like Doctor Strange Fate and also Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, those were all very cool. And so, yeah, Marvel DC, if you're out there, if you guys can do another crossover miniseries at some point and it allows you to reprint these where you guys can somehow split the profits or one of you produced uh, two of the graphic novels, and the other company produce the other two just like you did in the 90s and share the wealth that way uh, I think that would be really cool and I think a lot of people would really appreciate it and, and enjoy it and it would introduce a lot of new fans to the times that could have been the things that could have been if these two companies were on a more uh, you know friendly basis and it's not that they hate each other a lot of people that work those companies you know trade you know all the time like they're like baseball teams they like talent goes to each one uh, but overall I think there is lines that each company can't cross, and I would like to see them maybe cross it one more time, just for nostalgic sake, uh, but also because of look at all the new characters that are big at Marvel and DC now that could get really great crossovers. I think that would be awesome. Uh, and also the return of maybe Iron Lantern, Iron Man and Green Lantern mixed together. Uh, that would be cool. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of this down below. Uh, let me t Tell me your favorite Amalgam story if you read them. If not, do you have an idea for an Amalgam story? Uh, let me know down below. I really love this stuff, and I like talking about this, so I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys today in this Marvel vs. DC episode of Venom Vlog. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.